Hey everybody, it's Pastor David from Walden Community Church. Confession time for you. I, uh, I talk to myself, yep. I mean, sure, that's how I like to pray, but that's also a coping mechanism of mine. I talk to myself, especially if I'm worried or if I'm stressed, if there's a discussion that's looming off in the future and I know I either need to confront someone or apologize to someone, what I end up doing is I rehearse uh, what I'm anxious about out loud. Like if I think I'm going to have an upsetting conversation with you later, I'll go over it in my head. So I talk out the whole thing and I practice exactly what I'm going to say. I also have restless leg syndrome. I've had it all my life. My mom used to say that I had too much energy and uh, had it all the time I was growing up, but I still have it. Uh, I have restless leg when I'm trying to relax, even when I'm trying to go to sleep. Another thing is I, I make long to-do lists of all the things I need to get done because one of my greatest fears is I'm going to drop the ball on a project or something that I've been asked to do. And so if I have these long to-do lists or I have a conversation that I'm thinking about tomorrow, I'm going over that in my head while I'm trying to sleep. And then I look over at the clock and, you know, it's three o'clock in the morning. So my mind is racing back and forth about all the things that I need to do. Call it stress, call it anxiety, but I am a person who needs a little more peace in their life. And I was especially made aware of this about two years ago when I thought I was having a heart attack. I was walking around the room, I was taking very deep breaths, trying to calm myself down. Uh, my fingertips were buzzing and my head was dizzy. And then a few days later, it happened again. So I talked to some people about my symptoms and I discovered that I was having a panic attack. Now, I'd never had one before and oddly enough, um, it just had some weird symptoms and so I went to my doctor and my doctor said, uh, you're carrying too much weight. She said, it's putting extra strain on your heart. So my orders from my doctor were lose weight and relax. That's just me. Here's how the rest of the world is doing. 77% of us are experiencing physical symptoms during this last month just due to stress. Half of adults lay awake at night during the last month because of stress. And on average, we're losing about 21 hours of sleep per month. This pandemic has had a major effect on our lives. Many of us are facing challenges that can be stressful, overwhelming. They're causing all kinds of emotions, both in adults and children. And things like uh, social distancing, I mean, sure, they can be necessary, but they make us feel isolated, they make us feel lonely, and they increase stress, increase anxiety. So if you have feelings of fear or anger, you feel more sad, more worried, numbness, frustration, you have changes in your appetite, your energy, you have changes in your desires, changes in your interests, if you have difficulty concentrating or making decisions, difficulty sleeping, if you have more headaches, more body pains, stomach problems, skin rashes, health problems, worsening of your mental health condition, or if you have increased alcohol or increased cigarette use, those are all signs of stress. So right now, the over-the-counter drug industry is making a killing off of us. I mean, watch TV sometime and be conscious of all the drug commercials you see just in an hour. And sadly, stress is no longer for adults. You know that one third of our American teenagers say they feel stressed out on a daily basis. Researchers suspect that teenagers feel this way from all the overwhelming expectations that are placed on them by both parents and society. And no longer are kids stress-free, but they've all become these little adults who are overtaxed in school, living with high expectations at home, bogged down with all kinds of extracurricular activities, which brings us to our next topic. At Walden Church, we're talking about living our best life. Can we make a small change? Or can we make a series of small changes that might help us leave anxiety, leave stress behind, and move closer to being people who have found peace? You know, Jesus says in the Sermon on the Mount, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food, and the body more important than clothes? 
Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or stow away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? Are you experiencing a lot more anxiety right now? Do you feel taxed? Do you feel stressed, either financially or physically? Wouldn't you like to drop all of this worry and put it at God's feet? Once we're honest with ourselves about where that worry is coming from, then we can bring those concerns to God. Everything, everything obvious, even the hidden things, The easy things would be like a children's illness or a lost job, but we also have those embarrassing things to admit, like uh, a fallout from a stupid mistake or the consequence of a wrong choice. And things like we don't understand, like lost sleep and panic attacks. Whatever you feel, whatever is going on in your life, drop it at the cross and leave it there. You were not meant to carry the weight of the world. God can carry your burden. This week at Walden Church, we're going to talk about leaving anxiety behind and finding more peace in our lives. We have two services every Sunday, one at 9.30. It's our traditional service and we have a choir. And then we have our second service at 11 o'clock. It's a more contemporary service. We have a worship team. We also have a children's program and we have youth group. And we also have youth group on Wednesday nights. Every Wednesday at 6 o'clock, you can send your kids over on their skateboards or their bicycles. We will even feed them dinner and we'll send them home to you an hour and a half later. Hey, anything we can do for you, we want to be the church where you live. I'll see you guys soon.